Well, good morning, and Merry Christmas. It is Christmas Day. It is a wonderful time of the year. It's a great opportunity to gather together as we are to celebrate the birth of our Savior. A couple of things before we begin. As you entered, you should have received a connection card, so if you would, just fill that out. Put that in the offering basket at the appropriate time in the service. If you are with us for the very first time, then hold on to that. See us at the Connection Center, which is right behind the curved wall here at the end of the service. We have a gift for you. Just our way of saying thank you for joining us on Christmas here at Emmanuel. We also have another gift for everyone, for every family. And if you did not receive one yesterday, we have Christmas ornaments commemorating the gift of Christ here at Emmanuel in 2016. We plan on doing this every year, so this is going to be a collector's item. So, just so you know. So if you didn't get yours yesterday, uh, please get one today. Also, it is my privilege to introduce Pastor Bob Padell. He is with us a little early, and he is a great Christmas gift as well. So we're, we're, let's give him a warm Emmanuel welcome. He will be leading us in worship today. We are going to be celebrating the Lord's Supper as well uh, later on in our service. I understand that we did run out of bulletins. Uh, We didn't expect quite as many uh, today, but we are so glad that you are here. Christmas Day is, is a great time to celebrate. We often do that on Christmas Eve and sometimes forget Christ was actually born on Christmas Day. So it's great to have all of you here. The service, however, is on the screen, so you will be able to follow along and sing all the the songs and and follow along with all the readings and responses on the screen. There are also our sermon notes, so hopefully you got those. You can fill those out uh, during uh, the sermon if you like and use those as part of your devotions for the rest of this week. So with that, let's all rise and welcome everyone to the Lord's house.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. we continue with the salutation. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, long ago you spoke through the voices of men to proclaim your promise. Now you have spoken through your Son, the Word made flesh. Give us ears to hear and hearts to believe the living voice that bestows upon us the fullness of your promises once for all. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives in unity with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated as we turn our attention to the reading of the Old Testament as read by Bonnie. The Old Testament reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 52. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who bring good news, who publishes peace, who brings good news of happiness, who publishes salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. The voice of your watchmen, they lift up their voice, together they sing for joy. For eye to eye they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together in singing, you waste places of Jerusalem, for the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. This is the word of our Lord. The lesson is taken from the book of Hebrews, chapter 1. Long ago, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he created the world. He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature, and he upholds the universe by the word of his power. After making purifications for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, You are my son, today I have begotten you? Or again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, He says, let all God's angels worship him. This is the word of the Lord.
Please stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel is according to St. Luke, the second chapter. Lord, the Lord. Luke writes, In those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen as it had been told them. This is the gospel of our Lord. We continue with From Heaven Above to Earth I Come. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, it is Christmas morning, and so the word for the day, probably the word that you have heard more over the last 24 hours and probably will again over the next, probably more than you have for the entire previous 12 months, is the word gift. And the question did you receive the gift that you wanted? Well, did you? <laughs> did you get the gifts that you wanted? Good, good, good. And for those who are parents, did you give the gifts <laughs> that they really wanted? So there were no unhappy faces either last night or this morning. Well, I did a little research to see what do you give the person that has everything? What do you give the person that has everything? Well, it kind of depends on how much you are willing to spend on that person. So I, I, I looked at a couple of different catalogs, a Neiman Marcus catalog and, and a couple of others that you could, I even went online to see what you could do. 
Now, are there any dog lovers? Dog lovers? Yeah, okay. We don't have a dog anymore, but I, I love dogs. So I, I found out that for the dog lover, the gift that they probably don't have is a diamond-encrusted collar for their dog. It has 132 jewels in it, and it only will set you back $3.2 million. So, you know, that would be a great gift for the person who has everything. Now, for those who are into ath- athletics... Uh, there is a special edition Michael Jordan Nike gold dipped sneaker. Gold dipped. It is only $52,000. And I thought, well, that's not much more than the regular Nike sneakers. <laughs> <laughs> $52,000. Well, I could go on and on, but I, I discovered that the most expensive Christmas gift ever, and I don't know who keeps track of this stuff, but supposedly it is your personal luxury 213 foot submarine. A luxury, not yacht, but submarine. You know, we could park it out in Crystal Lake, you know, dock it there and impress all of our friends and neighbors. 5,000 square feet. I mean, that's twice as big as my house. (laughs) And it has enough room for your own automobile. You know, every submarine needs an automobile. And a mini sub as well. You know, just in case you want to go down to 2,000 feet while you're going across the Atlantic Ocean. Gifts. That's what Christmas is about. Gifts but not the ones that we got under the tree last night or this morning or the ones that we gave. It's all about the greatest gift, the gift that God gave to us in the form of his son in the manger. So let's take a look this morning at how our attitude is reflected in this greatest gift, as we give and receive gifts as well. So first of all, anticipate the joy. That's really, I think, half the fun of Christmas is is the anticipation, uh, the waiting. In Luke chapter 2, there in the Christmas story, we read, But the angel said to them, to the shepherds, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. Now, when you're younger, the joy, really the anticipation is in getting the gift, isn't it? I mean, I, I was a kid, still kind of am a kid. <laughs> you know, you like, you like to get the gifts. I don't know about you, but when I was a, a child with my four brothers, uh, we would take turns. Now, we didn't do this knowingly or on purpose, but because there were five of us, we would go and we would sneak into the living room in the evening, and we would just lie under the Christmas tree, just looking at all the lights, smelling the cedar, because it was a real tree back in those days. But really, you were there because you wanted to look at all the gifts. Now, we had a rule in our house, you couldn't shake them, couldn't pick them up, couldn't touch them, you could look all you wanted. And I remember dreaming so many times, I wonder if I'm going to get what I want, I wonder if I'm going to get what I want, I wonder if I'm going to get that game that I wanted for years and years or that rifle that I've wanted my entire life. I never did get the rifle. (laughs) Probably because when I was about eight, I shot my twin brother with a BB gun, so there were no more more weapons in in the Tiemann household for the twins. We might hurt each other. So when you're younger, the anticipation is in the getting. But then as you get a little older, and as you become a parent, as you have others, then the anticipation is in the giving, isn't it? And you know how it is. You know what you got, your wife or your husband or your children or your your grandparents or, or whomever it is. You know what you got them. And yet, you have that adrenaline rush and your, your palms get a little sweaty and you're all jittery because you can't wait for them to open the gift, right? And you leave the, the best gift for last, just to see the joy of those who are receiving the gift. Well, can you imagine, as as we anticipate, either the getting or the giving of the gift, can you imagine how God felt? 
giving the greatest gift of all. He had waited thousands of years for the, for the exact right time, giving this gift of his son. Paul writes, but when the fullness of the time came, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, so that he might redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. This gift that, well, when you look at it, doesn't look like a lot. <laughs> I don't know, six, seven, eight pounds wrapped in swaddling clothes. No gold tip sneakers there. No diamonds. No fancy vehicle for him to, to be transported in. In just a couple of years, they would all take the trip to Egypt, probably on the back of a donkey. And yet this is the most valuable, the most costly gift that has ever been given because this is God who grows up to give his life for all of us so that we can have a relationship with our Father in heaven. As the Son of God came down to earth and made the sacrifice for us, we become his children and we receive this greatest gift of all. So it all begins with the anticipation, but then... The celebration. How many of you opened your, your gifts last night? How many of you opened them this morning already? How many of you are still waiting? Okay, several, a bunch, okay. I won't keep you then, too long. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, keep it short, wrap it up, get it over with. <laughs> you know how it is when the children, the, they get those gifts and, you know, we're not very careful then, are we? We, we? We've had that anticipation. We can't wait anymore. And, and the fingers are flying. The bows are, you know, they're not, they're take, not taken off nicely. They're just torn apart. And, and everything is, is in, a, in, a, in a big pile. Well, that's, that's part of the celebration, isn't it? Of receiving the gift. It's interesting to me that, that humans are, are the only ones on our planet that give gifts. Animals don't give gifts, right? They don't celebrate birthdays or, or holidays or, or Christmas or anything like that. And that's because we are all wired for gifts. We're, all, that's, we're wired to give and to receive. And why? Because we're made in the image of God. Our God is a giver. He's given us everything, everything that we have. Certainly the greatest gift in his son, but everything we have, our family, our health, our, our homes, our talents, our abilities, our time. Because God is indeed a giver. And so as we look at good Christmas gifts, there's really two requirements in any good gift, whether at Christmas or any time, two requirements. First of all, it expresses the love of the one who gives the gift, right? And it meets the need of the one who receives the gift. So all of you, as you made your choices for Christmas, put some thought into it, right? You don't, you don't give a golf club to someone who loves to fish and hates golf, would you? That would be silly. Nor would you give a rod and reel to someone who never goes fishing. Well, the best Christmas gift, this greatest gift of all, meets our greatest need. And our greatest need is forgiveness, for we are all sinners. From the very beginning, we, we inherited from our parents and they from their parents, and, and all the way, generation and generation, all the way back to Adam and Eve, has inherited sin. And it's a problem. <laughs> sin, which leads to death. And unless there's a remedy... Unless someone does something about it, we remain broken sinners forever. Well, the good news of Christmas is God did something. He fixed this great need. He provided the forgiveness that everybody needs. You know, earlier I talked about, you know, what do you get, what do you get to someone who has everything? Well, you give them forgiveness. <laughs> That's the greatest gift. 
the greatest need that we all have. So Jesus is the gift that everybody, everybody can celebrate. You know, there in your notes, if you have that in front of you, this is the only time in all of Scripture where these three words, Christ, Savior, and Lord, are all together. And there's a reason for that. You see, the Jews, they had been waiting for thousands of years for the anointed one, the Christ, the Messiah. And so now the Messiah was here and the Jews can celebrate. The one that had been prophesied for thousands of years, the one that is promised, the heir to the throne of David, this great king, he's been born in the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. But not only the Jews, the, the Gentiles, which is everyone else, the only two races really on the planet. This is everybody. Back in the Old Testament, in order to have a relationship with the true God, with Yahweh, you had to adopt the Jewish customs and traditions all the way to circumcision. But now everyone can celebrate because not only is there a Christ, there is a Savior, which means the entire, entire world can celebrate because everyone is a sinner and everyone needs a Savior. And now we are all together with not only the Christ, not only a Savior, but with our Lord. The God of the heavens has come down to earth and we can all celebrate as his children and so they did Luke chapter 2 and suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among men on whom his favor rests so we've had this long anticipation we are now in the midst of the celebration and finally all that's left is to say thank you <laughs> isn't that what you do when you get a gift, thank you. Isn't that what we teach our children? Don't forget. <laughs> Say thank you. So we need to demonstrate our own gratitude for the gift, the greatest gift, but for all the gifts that we receive at Christmas and throughout the year. Let me close with this. There's a question there. How do you know when Christmas really happens? Well, it's different in every family, isn't it? For a lot of you, it's going to be later this morning. Christmas really happens for you when the whole family gets together. Maybe it's the celebration on Christmas Eve, the candlelight service. That's kind of what it's always been in our family, that tradition of going to the candlelight. Maybe it's a couple days later when the extended family, the cousins and the aunts and the uncles and the grandmas and the grandpas all get together. I don't know. But for our family, as the people of God, Christmas happens. Not just when the child is born in the manger, but when we receive him again in the manger of our heart. It's a wonderful thing about Christmas. Though it only comes on the calendar once a year, the gift is there forever. There was a little girl, her name was Jessica. She'd had a wonderful Christmas. She got everything she wanted on her list. <laughs> she had food all day. Her favorite cousins had come to visit. And so that night as she was getting tucked into bed, she said to her mom, do you think Mary and Joseph will have another baby next year? <laughs> We've already received the greatest gift. There is only one Jesus, but he lives in our heart. Let's share him this Christmas and every day. Amen. Let's all rise and make profession of our Christian faith this morning through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty.
life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the prayer of the church. After my part, please respond with, Lord, hear our prayer, or excuse me, Lord, have mercy. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs, for holy joy to greet the word made flesh in Christ's saving birth, and for the confidence to hold fast to this faith and to proclaim this good news with speedy feet and bold witness to the world. Let us pray to the Lord. For blessing upon the church gathered around the living word, for those who proclaim this word and teach it to us, for the missionary who brings it to those who have not yet heard, and for families who impart this word and faith to their children, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for peace in a world that knows no peace, for justice for the oppressed, for protection for the weakest, especially the unborn, for the punishment of evildoers and the promotion of virtue here and through our nation and for every people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the visible word of bread that is Christ's body and wine that is his blood, for those who will receive this holy food this day, for our unity and faith and the strengthening of our fellowship together in the body of Christ, the church, let us pray to the Lord. For the wounded in body or spirit, those grieving loved ones, the aged or the infirmed, that they may call upon the Lord in their trouble and enjoy his ever-present mercy to heal them according to his will, sustain them in patience, and deliver them at last to everlasting life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the faithful who went before us, who died in faith and now live in Christ, that we may not waver in the face of temptation, nor succumb to doubt, but endure in faith to the day when Christ comes in his glory to bring to completion his new creation and bring us and all the faithful to the marriage supper of the Lamb in his kingdom that has no end. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, comfort, and defend us, O Lord. For these and all things needful for this body and life, let us pray with confidence in the name of the Word made flesh, our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom be glory and honor with the Father and the Spirit, now and to the end of the ages. Amen. We continue with our confession. Recalling our sin and God's mercy, let us examine our lives and consciences. Holy and gracious God, I, a poor sinner, plead guilty before you, O Lord, for all my sins. I have lived as if you did not matter, and I mattered most. Your name I have not honored, and my worship and prayers have faltered. I have not let your love have its way with me, and so my love for others has failed. There are those whom I have hurt, and those whom I have failed to help. My thoughts and desires are soiled with sin. I am sorry for all my sins and plead for your mercy in Christ Jesus. Graciously forgive me all my sins and help me amend my sinful life. Amen. As a called and ordained minister of the Lord, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We share the peace of Christ. Please be seated. Our God is a gracious and generous God who has given us everything, including the gift of his Son, 
who died for us on the cross. Being created in his image, we too were made to be generous. We now give but a portion back to him through our tithes and offerings so that his work might be done through the church. As Pastor mentioned earlier, we have the connection cards. If you'd please fill those out. And if you are a guest with us today, first of all, thank you very much for joining us. And also, if you could please complete that card. If you return it to the Connection Center in the back, uh, we're happy to give you a gift for being with us today as a thank you. We continue with our singing. Please stand. We continue with the preface. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly our joy and delight, our purpose and our duty, to rejoice in the wonder of this day, in the mystery of the Word made flesh and in the promise of glory that sin and death cannot overcome. Give us this glory now and always, that we may rejoice in what the Word made flesh has accomplished, and enjoy the riches of His mercy in the salvation of our souls. Now, with all the host of heaven, and with the faithful throughout the earth, with angels and archangels to lead our praises, let us evermore rejoice and sing in your praise. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and have given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. In the beginning you created all things by your word, 
In the fullness of time, your word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. Let your word, made flesh, dwell richly among us, that faithfully eating his body and drinking his blood, we may receive the fullness of your grace and truth in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We continue with the Lamb of God. You may be seated.
The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. What we have received in our ears and upon our lips, O Lord, keep within us in faithful hearts that the joy of Christ's birth may sustain us through the journey of this mortal life and his gifts equip us through forgiveness for the everlasting life that is to come. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand as you're able. Depart in peace with this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. At this time, on behalf of the faculty and staff of Emmanuel, I'd like to wish you and yours a very blessed and joy-filled Christmas. And then also, we'd now join in singing our closing hymn, Joy to the World. <laughs>